Okay, there isn't really that much to um, string handling in Python. So if we just set up a variable called my string, I'm not going to bother using subroutines for this just now. Um, I am a string. So we have a variable there and we have set it up. Now, they can be indexed like an array. A string is literally an, an array of characters, a string of characters. So if I tell it to print my string, and if I use the square brackets to indicate an array, and if I print off character two, if I just quickly run that one, you'll see that I get the letter A because it indexes from position zero. So if I just look up at my string here, position zero would be I, position one is a blank, and position two is the letter A. You've got to remember the spaces are, are stored. Now, if I want to print off a substring, so if I just put in some comments here, except I type correctly. Um, if I tell it to print and I print my string, and this time using the square brackets, I put a start index and an end index. So if I tell it to print from element zero up to element three, and if I save that and run that code, you'll see that I get I and then A, because what I'm getting is effectively character zero, character one, and character two. So I'm getting those characters there. Now it's stopping before it gets to element th uh, character three, or uh, space three, which is the M. So it stops before it gets there. Just like when it does a loop. If you tell it to loop from zero to five, it actually does zero, one, two, three, and four, which is five iterations through the loop. So we're just gonna do a few more just to kind of give some examples here. So if I tell it to print, and I should really just paste this code just now. I'll copy that code there. And if I tell it to print from two to four, I will get am um, because I'm going to get character two, which is a. I'm going to get character, and it stops before it reaches character four, which is the space. You'll see there's no space there at all. Now, if I'm dealing with the the um, right hand side, so printing from the printing from the left. At uh, the right, sorry. What I can do is I can tell it to print from character seven, which is element seven is the S. And if I tell it to print to the end, which is the length of a string called my string. Now, if I run that, I should get the word string. Now, another way of doing that, okay, is this is the same is I actually can just leave that argument blank and just put in there. Now if I run that, you'll see that I get exactly the same. I get string and string. So if you leave that, if you're going from start to the end, if you leave that argument blank, it will um, just go straight to the end. Um, the same kind of works if I do it from the start. So like earlier on we did zero to three, what I can actually do, if I put in nothing there, and put in um, three. If I run that code, it'll pick it up from the start and you'll see I space A. So if I wanted to um, get I am, I would just change that to four. And if I quickly run that, you'll see I get I am. So again, that's basically picking up from the start as opposed to the end. Now, some languages will have a write function where I can say grab the, the right hand three characters. And a way to visualize that, I'm just gonna put a quick um, image on the screen here, and it'll show that we can use a negative indexing system. So if I tell it to print, okay, I've still got my code there on. If I actually tell it to print the characters minus four, what it's gonna do is the very right-hand side has got an element of an index of minus one. So minus one would be the G, minus two would be the N, minus three would be the I, and minus four would be R. So if I tell it to run that code, you'll see that I get the letter R. Now I can do things like, for example, I can tell it to print, like I've did before, if I tell it to print from um, character six, so that should be from the S in the string, up until the end, it'll grab, hopefully, that whole word string. So I can use the negative in indexing and if I tell it to print minus four, just to kind of, I can actually basically grab, oops, sorry. I can actually do minus four. And you'll see I get the word ring. 
Now, I can also use step arguments. So if I just make a new string just now and call it original, just so I don't get myself confused, I can actually tell it, just like in a loop, I can tell it to print the, the, the string called original. Now, this works for loops also. In loops, you're used to doing, um, if I just quickly put a loop on the screen here, if I put a loop there and I tell it to go to 5, that's actually the same as going from 0 to 5, and it's actually saying going from 0 to 5 in steps of 1. Now, I actually could do it, so if I just quickly show you that as an example, I can tell it to print x, and if I quickly just run that code to show you, okay, so I get 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If I change that to 2 and run it, you see I actually get 0, then 2, then 4. It goes up in steps of 2. Now, likewise, I can change my numbers about here and tell it to go from 5 to 0 in steps of minus 1. And if I tell it to print off that, you see I actually go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I can modify that and just kind of do this all day. And you see that, so I can use that same technique to only print off every second character, for example. So I can tell it to print the string called original, and I can go from 3 in steps of 2. So this should start at 0. Don't actually need it there, but I'll put it there just for sanity. I forgot to close my bracket. And if I tell it to run, you'll see that my last line is I and then A, because I'm getting that character there, that character there. So I'm getting character 0 and then character 2. Obviously, the next iteration would be character 4, but I've told it to stop before 3. Now I can also reverse strings. Now there are st uh, string functions that, that will do this. Okay, so if I tell it to print off, I'm just going to change this to the string is my original, just so I've got a bit more characters to play with. I'll take that line away just now. I can tell it to do print original. I'll just copy that code just now. And if I tell it to print from 11, oops, sorry, 11 to 5 minus 1. You see I've gone from the end character, okay, to character 5 in steps of minus 1. So I would have wanted to get the word, so because I'm starting at position 11, so it should output string backwards but I've actually got T-R-I-N-G space because remember I'm starting at position 11 which is that's 0 that's 1 that's 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 I'm actually starting at a space so to get the, um, the word string I would actually need to print off not 11 to 5 but 10 to 4 because it starts at position 10 and I want it to stop before it gets to position 4. So you'll see I've actually got string reversed. Just some more examples of that. I can actually print off the entire string in reverse. I could use a loop to go through a character through the array and print off each character at a time. I'll maybe do that in a second. I can also tell it to print off the entire string. Now you'll notice I'm not putting a start position, I'm not putting an end position, I'm just telling it to do in steps of minus 1. And you'll see that I actually get this space string space is my original. And that's just in complete, complete reverse. I mean, I could actually use a loop that says for x in range. And I can tell it to go from the length of the string to position 0 in steps of minus 1. And I can tell it to print the original string at position x. I forgot my colon there. Now if I run that, okay, sorry, I need to stop it before it gets to um, the end because obviously the length of the string is too big, so it needs to be the length of the string minus one. Okay, so I could do it that way, and you'll see that I've got the string in reverse. I could just concatenate it together. I'm just going to clear my uh So that is one way to do it. I'm just going to delete that one now. One important thing to say about strings is even though you can print off 
So for example, print off my string two. If I tell it that my string, and I want to change character um, two, and I want to change that to the letter Y, I don't know why I would want to, but you see, I actually get an error, okay? Strings are immutable, you can't actually change them. You could do a workaround by adding them all together, or you could actually build a string up one character at a time, but it's just concatenation, there is nothing new. And the only new predefined function I'm gonna show you is, we. there are predefined functions that convert between ASCII uh, characters and vice versa. And in Python, they are the ORD function. So if I tell it to print the ordinal of A, okay, I just missed a bracket there, and another one, okay, it should find the actual ASCII value for me, which, if I remember, lowercase a should be 97. But likewise, I can actually do the reverse of that. I can give it an ASCII code. So if I tell it to print, and I use the chr function, and I put in 65, the ASCII value for 65 should be an uppercase A. So that's another way to do it. The only other function that may be of some use is when you're wanting to find where um, a space is. So for example, if I've got a full name and I'm going to put my name as Mr. Hey, if I want to find out where that space is and split that up into two, two um, lines. There is a few ways to do it. You, you can use a split command. So for example, I can tell it to um, a separate, so names is, I can tell it to split the variable called full name. And I could tell it to split it, not on the comma like we've done before, but print it off that. And if I tell it to print off names, I should get my two separate names there. Oh, sorry. Name split is not defined. Let me two sorry two seconds. Completely forgot. It's not the um, way we use the split command. It is names is full name dot split, and then we'll tell it to split on the space. Sorry, completely forgot that one. So you'll see that I've got the two separate names there. Or what I could do is I could find um, the um, where the space is and extract strings before it. So we're going to look at a quick way to do that. And this may be useful if you're needing to split things up in particular um, in particular ways. What I could do is rather than using the split command, what I could say is I could find the position. So I could have a variable called space position and I could say that that is the variable full name and I need to find the index which is the position of wherever the space is. So if I tell it to find where the space is and what I could say is that first name is going to be the variable full name. I'm going to use string handling here and I can say it's from zero and up until wherever my space position is found to be and I'll do a quick breakpoint on that just to just to check, and my surname would be from my space position up until the end. But what we need to remember is that we find where the space is, so it'll actually need to be space position plus one. And if I put a quick breakpoint there and just debug that, we should see that my full name is Mr. Hay. And if I just step into my code a little bit, you'll see my first name is Mr. And my surname, I should have put an extra line there, would be Hey. No, sorry, did I not? Sorry. My surname is going to be the full name. Sorry, so I just quickly rebug that program again. So, so my first name is Mr. And because I've not actually got anything on the last, I'll just tell it to print it off. So print. And I'll just do first name. Well, we're quite sure the first name is working, but we'll, we'll, we'll just do it that way. And if I just copy and paste that line. And surname is whatever my surname is. And hopefully that should use substrings to break that up into two. 
Now you'll see that I've actually grabbed the space there. Okay, so that means I've grabbed a character too much, so I'll just run it that way. Is it? Yeah, I think there's two spaces there. No, sorry, it was just I have accidentally put. Oh, sorry, I forgot I used concatenation there, so I was actually completely right the first time, and that it was plus one. Um, and that pretty much covers string handling in um, Python. Now we can use the ORD function, uh, sorry, the character function to generate, for example, random letters. You would just need a copy of the ASCII table. And if we quickly just pull up one of those, I could tell it to, for example, I could use a math function, so import random. And I could tell it to print off a random letter. Now I could make a big array, but that would be a tad long-winded, particularly if I'm going to put um, 52 records in it. So for example, all the lowercase letters start at um, ASCII code 97 and all go all the way up to 122. So I could to tell it to print a random letter. So I'm actually going to grab the, I'm going to tell it to say random letter, uh, random ASCII code, sorry, random ASCII. And I'm going to say that is a random int. And the lowest value would be 97 because that's lowercase a and lowercase z is 122. And if I tell it to print off the um, character function and I put in this random value, I'm just going to comment all these lines out just so they don't. Run. So I'll just quickly comment those out just so it doesn't run. And if I quickly run string handling, okay. Oh, sorry, I can wait for it. It's, I'll just put it from import random. Random dot. There we go. And you'll see that I actually get a random letter. So if I run that again, I should get a different letter all the time. So there I'm getting lowercase m. You could do the same with numbers, letters, and you could use that to, for example, construct passwords and other random information. And that pretty much is everything you may need to do in um, string handling. And that looks at substrings, and that looks at the predefined functions, ORD, and CHR.